Welcome to Side by Side today, and we are beginning a new journey, a journey through the Epistle to the Romans. And I think this is going to be one of those quite challenging journeys that we may have. Of course, all of the Bible has its own particular challenge and its incredible blessing. But when we think about Paul's letter to the Romans, we want to first of all think about Rome itself, the city. Last year, well, no, a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, I was able to go with a group to visit Rome on a, a special conducted tour, uh, looking at Peter and Paul, really, their world, stripping away lots of the, the world that is in between, the modern world, the medieval world, and even some of the ancient world, getting to that period where Peter and Paul would have been in Rome, and both of them who lost their lives, who were martyred in Rome for their faith, I would have to say that it was one of the most, uh, I would say maybe a visit which left the deepest impression on me. Now, I have not been to Israel, and I'm sure if I went there, that would also have a very powerful effect too. But this really brought home the reality of the, the sense of these people being real people, living at a real time, and the stones that we're able to walk on, the buildings we're able to touch, the catacombs we were able to visit are all part and partial of the world that had been their actual world. And that's very, very powerful to experience. But Rome is an interesting place at any time. Today, it's a tremendous city to visit. When the time comes, we're able to do so again. I just encourage anybody who has the opportunity to take it. But Paul writes to Rome from Corinth. It's a letter to prepare for a later visit. So he sets out a full statement of the gospel, or as full as we have got in any other part of the New Testament. It's quite different to some of the other letters, which highlight more the person and the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, like Colossians and so on. That's not the type of letter it is. It's slightly different. Try to understand then the origin of this church. It most likely goes way back to Acts chapter 2 verse 10. When we have those visitors from Rome, as it's recorded there, who were part and partial of the Pentecostal experience when the Holy Spirit fell upon the gathered crowd just after uh, Peter's preaching there in Jerusalem. Of course, Rome is the focus of the empire, and it's quite unthinkable that in the 25 years since then, which is roughly the length of time from that Pentecostal moment until Paul writes, it's, it's quite unthinkable that Christians had not been back and forwards to Rome because it was really the hub of the empire. And they did have a very substantial Jewish community there. Jews in Rome, well, they say they date back to the second century BC. They would certainly have been brought by as prisoners of war by Pompey in 63 BC. And there's a very, a very grand gate or entrance into the city, the old city, which describes that campaign that Pompey had, and there you have the Jews coming with their menorah. Very clearly, you can know it's Jewish prisoners of war. Then many of them might have found their freedom and went on to live in the city. And then, of course, we can read about the expulsion of Jews in AD 19 by Emperor Tiberius, or later on in AD 41 to 54 by Claudius. And so these big communities of Jews would lead to us to understand that those Jews who come to faith in Christ, some of them will find their way to Rome. F. F. Bruce refers to these riots that are that were the reason for the expulsion of the Jews in AD 41 to 54 under Claudius as happening at the instigation of a name which looks like Christ may be Christians. And it's highly likely that the tensions between the Jews and the Christians and the Christian Jews may well have led to this. We can read about it, people like Aquila and Priscilla, who came from Rome and were part of Paul's ministry team. Well, we think it must have really been written around about AD 57 in winter, spring 58. And at that time, the church must have been fairly substantial because Paul talks about them having been known, their faith as known all over the world. And that's not surprising, is it? For Rome is like many large cities, capital cities, 
where populations come and go and come and go. And that is reflected, no doubt, in the community of Christians too. When did Paul get there? Well, we know that Paul did arrive there eventually. This letter may have been a preparatory letter in his hope and aspiration. He writes from Corinth, and then he travels to Jerusalem. He brings with him the gift for the church there. But did he have some sense that maybe in Jerusalem things were maybe not going to work out so well? Well, I think he knows in his heart that things are tense, and eventually he is then imprisoned. And you can read all about that in Acts 26, 27. He is put on a ship, and it travels across the Mediterranean. The ship is caught in a great storm, and it is then ends up being washed ashore at Malta. Now, if you're interested, you can go back and listen to a sermon on Acts 27 that we did some weeks back. And then, after that, Paul then arrives in Rome. He arrives, of course, at the coast. The coast is about 30 to 40 miles from the Roman city of Rome. And some Christians come to meet him, and they accompany him all the way to Rome. I've walked on that road, the Via Appia. The stones are polished. The stones are round. And you can imagine just what it was like. There's ruts that have been worn into the, the pathway after all of the years and years of travel. Of course, then, two years of house arrest in Rome. And later on, we don't know, was he released? Was he then rearrested? We're not sure. There's lots of discussions go on about these things. But we do know that he was finally martyred. And the place he's martyred at is now got a church called St. Paul's Outside the Walls. And I think... Uh, for me, it was one of the most moving visits. I think apart from the catacombs where we had a communion service in the catacombs, uh, which was really was really very, very powerful. But St. Paul's Outside the Walls is a beautiful church. And it was then uh, that I was able to conduct a short Sunday morning worship service in the gardens outside of that. And that is a lasting memory. Inside there are is meant to be the place where Paul's final resting place, and there is a chain. I don't think it's the chain that chained him to the soldier, but it's a chain of that era, of that first century, the type of chain that he would have been chained with. So here we have this man with a Jewish heritage, Jewish training, Hebrew language, a Roman citizenship, and Greek culture that equipped him to minister to the most cosmopolitan cities, and the most cosmopolitan of all would have been Rome, well, arguably. He's been a Christian 20 years before this little epistle was written, and so he's had lots of time to reflect on, to consider and to weigh up and to sharpen up his thinking, guided by the Holy Spirit so clearly, so that what he writes is God's word clearly to us. One of the church fathers, Christosom, he had it read to him, that's the epistle of Romans, once a week. And Luther, no less than, calls it the chief book of the New Testament. I think the reason, well, I would imagine the reason it is said so is because of its content, its theological content, but it's not just theological. There are lots of other aspects to it. And maybe your first thought of, in Romans is, oh, it's going to be so heavy. No. W.H. Uh, Griffiths Thomas, someone who has written a Baptist preacher in the, in, of a centuries earlier, says, the epistle, the epistle of Roman, to Romans should be regarded as a personal letter to ourselves. Its deepest, deepest secrets will only be revealed to the heart that is willing to submit to its teaching and translate it into action. That's an encouraging note for us. And so let me just read you two verses or a few verses from it just before we will then launch in tomorrow uh, with our thought thinking through this. Paul's core message in Romans is found in verses 16 and 17 of the first chapter where he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous 
shall live by faith. And we look forward to sharing this journey together. So please do pray for me as I will seek to be faithful to this incredible truth and this incredible word from the Lord.